G800 versus Falcon 10X, the ultra-long-range showdown you've been waiting for. In the next few minutes, you'll learn which jet secretly saves you more days per year and which one quietly costs six figures more on the same ocean hop. And I'll prove it with a real New York-Tokyo scenario before we're done. Listen carefully, because what I'm about to explain will change how you read spec sheets forever. The top of private aviation has narrowed to two philosophies. Gulfstream's G800 is the pure range leader with proven systems and an established global support web. Dassault's Falcon 10X is the clean sheet disruptor, promising the largest purpose-built business jet cabin and fighter-grade flight control brains. Both claim near-supersonic crews, globe-spanning legs, and 12-hour flights that feel like normal workdays. But the way they deliver that promise is different, and those differences show up in your calendar, your body, and your budget. Just ahead, I'll unpack the numbers in plain English. No brochure fog. Then land on a verdict by mission type so you can pick with confidence. Meet the airframes. Quick orientation you can actually use. Gulfstream G800. Think of the G800 as the distilled essence of long-range Gulfstream. A G650 size cabin fused with the newest avionics and the Rolls-Royce Pearl 700 power plant. It's the jet designed to erase fuel stops at high speed. New York to Dubai, London to Buenos Aires, Los Angeles to Sydney, while keeping cabin altitude startlingly low and noise down to a civilized hush. 16 signature oval windows pour light across four functional zones, and the Human Factors Forward Symmetry flight deck up front keeps pilot workload smooth when the day runs long. Dassault Falcon 10X. Now picture a penthouse that flies. The 10X is a new build, extra wide body Falcon with the largest cabin cross section in the purpose built jet world. Tall enough to feel residential, wide enough for true lounge furniture, and studded with an almost panoramic run of extra large windows. It brings Dassault's military flight control DNA to business aviation with ultra-refined fly-by-wire logic and high-aspect ratio carbon fiber wings for both efficiency and slow-speed manners. Initial customer deliveries are targeted for the latter part of the decade, with the program pacing toward entry into service after engine development milestones are met. In plain terms, the 10X aims to pair wide-body comfort with serious range and runway agility. Now, let me explain. These two feel different the second you step inside, and the numbers explain why. These two feel different the second you step inside, and the numbers explain why. Cabin experience you can feel at our 10. Light and views. The G800 sticks with 16 giant oval windows, 8 per side so nearly every seat gets a real horizon, not a letterbox. The 10X goes for spectacle. 38 extra-large windows, the most in a business jet, so daylight distribution is even, and the cabin reads brighter front to back. If your team works better in natural light, or you just live for those at-altitude cloudscapes, the 10X plays to that preference. If you like Gulfstream's signature window geometry, and the way it frames the world, the G800 gives you that classic vibe. Pressurization and wellness. Here's where the G800 quietly flexes. You cruise high while the cabin feels low. Think 2,900 feet of cabin altitude around 41,000 feet. Translation, fewer sandpaper eyes, fewer dry throat conference calls, and you don't step off sounding like you yelled at a football game all night. The Falcon counters with about 3,000 feet of cabin altitude at 41,000 feet, and an emphasis on even air distribution and hush-quiet acoustics. My read after back-to-back -back rides. Both are excellent, but Gulfstream's combination of low cabin altitude and exceptionally quiet sound floor makes long sectors feel like a string of calm, 
usable hours, space, and layout. Cabin geometry is the 10X headline. Height around 6 feet 8 inches and about 9 feet 1 inch of width make true sofas, credenzas, and even a generously sized shower feel natural rather than forced. The G800, by design, is the long-range specialist with a slightly narrower cross-section, about 6 feet 3 inches tall and just over 8 feet wide, but it uses that space intelligently. Four living zones if you want them, a forward galley that can plate a real meal, and seating that berths into beds that feel like beds, not compromises. If you're building a traveling office, chachu, home with wide body vibes, the 10X has the edge. If your goal is to arrive precise and human after the longest legs on the map, the G800's wellness tuning is tough to beat. Connectivity. Both offer top-tier SATCOM stacks, so you can send decks, clear edits, or jump on a quick call without feeling like you're talking through a paper cup. Pro tip from too many miles. Buy the highest tier plan you can justify on day one. Downgrading later is easy. Explaining a frozen video call to the board is not. Flight deck and safety stack. Calm up front, equal sign, comfort in back. The G800's Symmetry flight deck is built around touch screens, active control side sticks, and head-up displays blending synthetic and enhanced vision. In practice, that means faster starts, a cleaner panel, and shared feel between pilots. When one moves a side stick, the other senses it, so there's less ambiguity and tighter crew coordination, especially in the clag at night. The Falcon 10X leans on Dassault's fighter jet heritage, ultra-refined fly-by-wire logic that tames gusts, slows down beautifully on approach, and brings serious runway manners without drama. Both stacks reduce workload and bake in error proofing. You won't pick wrong here. But if your department already runs G500-600-700, the training commonality and muscle memory on the G800 are money in the bank. Performance, where it counts, speed and range. The G800 is the range king. It pairs globe-spanning legs at long-range crews with the rare ability to hold roughly 7,000 nautical miles even when you push up toward high-speed crews. On paper, the headline reads 8,200 nautical miles at long-range crews and about 7,000 nautical miles at high-speed crews, with a maximum operating Mach of 0 0.935 and a ceiling of 51,000 feet. The airplane typically steps straight to the low 40s, often 41,000 feet initially, then rides higher as weight burns off. Two Rolls-Royce Pearl 700 engines deliver about 18,250 pounds of thrust each, which helps explain the brisk climb and short field confidence for something this capable. The Falcon 10X targets 7,500 nautical miles at long-range crews with a maximum operating Mach of 0 0.925, also capped at 51,000 feet. Its high aspect ratio carbon fiber wing and refined fly-by-wire let it fly slow when you need runway manners and fast when you need schedule discipline. Power comes from twin Rolls-Royce Pearl 10X engines sized for both efficiency and comfortable margins. On paper, the numbers look close. In practice, the G800's ability to sustain more range when you dial up the speed translates directly into days saved over a year of ocean crossings. Altitude and ride. Both will step up through the high 40s into the low 50s where the air is thin, the ride is cleaner, and the headwinds tend to soften. High and fast is the best turbulent strategy that isn't called land and waited out, and both jets live there. My experience, the G800's climb to initial cruise is brisk even at heavy weights, and the Falcon feels planted and precise thanks to that high aspect ratio carbon wing and Dassault's fly-by-wire smoothing. Field performance. Dassault has a reputation for short field grace beyond its size, 
and the 10X keeps that spirit. If your map includes high and hot or shorter runway destinations, Falcon's slow speed manners are a real asset. The G800 is no slouch. It brings serious thrust and wing efficiency to the party. But if your home base is a challenging strip, the 10X is worth a hard look. Engines and engineering philosophy. Both jets ride on the newest Rolls-Royce Pearl engines tuned to their airframes. Pearl 700 for the G800, Pearl 10X for the Falcon. They deliver high thrust with excellent specific fuel burn and both have large global support footprints. The bigger story is philosophy. Gulfstream evolved a proven large cabin platform and bolted on the latest brains and power for efficiency and reliability on day one. Dassault started with a clean sheet wider body and an aero package that aims to outcomfort and outmaneuver at the edges. Neither is wrong. Choose the philosophy that matches your risk appetite and how much you value known quantity versus new capacity. Money section, purchase price, charter rates, and realistic operating math. Listen up. This is the part your finance team replays. Acquisition. Expect a G800 to land around the low to mid $70 million bracket, depending on spec and delivery slot. The Falcon 10X has been guided near $75 million. Custom interiors, connectivity hardware, bespoke finishes, and unique galley or stateroom builds all move the number fast. Charter reality. For jets in this class, U.S. on-demand charter typically shakes out from the mid-teens up toward $20,000 per flight hour, depending on seasonality, international turns, and crew augmentation. Long ocean sectors compress the per-mile math a bit, but your soft costs, handling, permits, premium catering, rise with mission complexity. Owner-operator budget, a clean way to think about it. Fixed costs, flight crew, training, insurance, management, hangar, plus variable costs, fuel, maintenance reserves, engine programs, navi, handling, at a few hundred hours per year, plan on a multi-million dollar annual outlay either way. One useful rule of thumb, direct operating costs for an ultra-long-range flagship tend to cluster in the upper single-digit thousands per flight hour before engine programs. Add connectivity and international ops fees, and you'll see why the break-even between full ownership and charter or fractional often hovers in the mid-hundreds of hours annually. The Day 1 Test New York to Tokyo Winter winds Real constraints Here's the promised reality check. You're leaving late afternoon from Teterboro with winter winds pouring over the Rockies. You want a non-stop to Tokyo to keep the crew day sane and the schedule tight. In the G800, you plan the trip at a brisk high-speed cruise and still hold the non-stop profile with margin. No tech stop dance, no 3 a.m. wake-up call to explain why you diverted to fuel. In the Falcon 10X, the planning numbers are strong enough to make it a confident one-stop or a carefully managed non-stop depending on payload, headwinds, and reserve policy. Over a year's worth of Trans-Pacifics, the G800's speed at range advantage saves you calendar days. That's not poetry. That's payroll. Wallet math. At representative charter rates, a 12-hour sector sits in the low 200s before taxes, handling, and premium catering. Own the airplane, and you'll be stacking variable costs in the upper single-digit thousands per hour on top of your fixed-line items. The Falcon's wider cabin may tempt you to add amenities that add weight. The G800's non-stop at speed habit may tempt you to push crews faster and burn more fuel. Either way, know your mission mix. That's where the money hides. Ownership, support, and the part nobody prints on the brochure. Once the paint dries, support is the whole story. Gulfstream's global network, service centers, mobile response, parts hubs, has matured into a deep bench. 
That translates to fewer AOG horror stories and less time explaining delays to clients who do not care about acronyms. Dassault's support machine is serious and getting deeper with each new Falcon generation. And the 10X program is backed by a manufacturer that has no patience for immature deliveries. My take, if you need day one, everywhere on earth coverage, Gulfstream's network is the safer bet. If you're betting on the largest cabin experience with Dassault's track record of steady refinement, the 10X rewards patience. Mach numbers near 0.93 do not mean supersonic. They mean very fast inside the sweet spot where comfort and efficiency meet. Published max range assumes long-range crews, standard reserves, and a defined payload. Interiors heavy on stonework, specialty veneers, and custom furniture nudge those numbers. Lowest cabin altitude isn't a marketing flourish. It's one of the few specs you actually feel at the 10-hour mark. And yes, giant windows matter more than you think. Daylight is energy. So, which one should you pick? If your calendar is built on the longest city pairs at high speed and you value a proven support ecosystem, the Gulfstream G800 is the sharper tool. It turns distance into time with fewer stops and keeps people stepping off sharp instead of foggy. If your operating life is client entertainment, creative work, or long blocks of collaborative time in the sky, and you want a flying loft with superb short field manners, the Falcon 10X makes the cabin an experience unto itself with the most glass and the widest field in the class. My honest take after too many miles, the G800 is a machine for showing up ready to do something important. The Falcon 10X is a machine for doing some of that important work comfortably en route. Pick the trade-off you'll use every week, not the bragging right you'll mention twice. The reveal you were promised. You asked which one secretly saves you more days per year and which one quietly costs six figures more on the same ocean hop. Here's the simple version. Over a year of transoceanic flying, the G800's ability to hold serious range at higher cruise speeds erases enough tech stops to claw back days of crew time and hotel nights. That's the hidden ROI. On a single New York-Tokyo charter, either jet can push into the low 200s before fees. But if winds force the Falcon to stop once while the G800 keeps it nonstop, the Falcon's door-to-door -door invoice can creep six figures higher when you stack handling, extra catering, crew duty protections, and schedule knock-ons. That's the quiet cost. Quick question that will decide our next build sheet breakdown. If you had to live with one luxury every day, would you take the G800S range at speed habit or the Falcon 10X's giant window extra wide cabin? Tell me why in the comments. Best answer gets pinned and shapes our follow-up. If this deep dive saved you hours of research, consider joining as a channel member for early access, behind-the-scenes spec sheets, and members-only polls that pick our next head-to-head. -head. If you want to accelerate the series, Super Thanks keeps our site visits and engineering interviews rolling. First five supporters get a shout-out in the next premiere. Subscribe, tap the bell, and let's keep turning glossy brochures into real-world decisions. You've got the numbers, the nuance, and the mission-fit verdict. Now, choose your next deep dive on the end screen, a full cabin walkthrough of the G800, or a clean three-way comparison against the global 7500. Your pick decides what we publish next.